Thank you for the introduction. So as presented, <clears throat> we will start with a vital 5G architecture overview. Um, so um, I would like to, to introduce, um, as a reminder, the vital 5G uh, context. The project is mainly focused uh, in order uh, to, to deploy. Ma Marius, oh, yes. apologies, but we can see both your screens. We cannot see your slides in full screen. Um, Is it better now? Yes, yes, much better. Thank you. So thank you for uh, for this, Costas. Uh, <clears throat> going back to the to the to the project, um, uh, we mainly want to 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 deploy different uh, network application, the the net apps, uh, in uh, different uh, uh, test beds uh, in different um, um, architecture. So um, focusing on these uh, NetApp deployments, um, we uh, mainly want to achieve uh, deployment of application-specific NetApps, as you can see on the on the slide in the in the green part. Also, we want to deploy application agnost agnostic NetApps, as you can see it can be seen in the in the gray colors. And of course, we want to uh, to 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 provide this NetApps uh, uh, implementation. Um, in the sense that multiple NetApps, specific or uh, agnostic, could be chained or have to be uh, chained uh, together um, uh, in order to provide the uh, advanced end-to-end -end services. So starting from these NetApps con con uh, context in the 5G uh, environment, in Vital 5G and in the scope of this uh, webinar, we want to, to highlight and to introduce the platform and the testbed capabilities uh, coping with these uh, uh, requirements. As an um, uh, overview, in the project, we have uh, different transport and logistic facilities that are um, uh, enable somehow the 5G uh, use cases. Uh, this defined in different uh, locations in Antwerp, in uh, Galați Danube in uh, Romania, and of course in the Athens in, uh, in Greece. Uh, each of these uh, uh, NetApps uh, within the uh, specific facilities um, running the specific use cases, uh, just to highlight some automated and remote vessel navigation or uh, in Romania uh, a case uh, that enable assisting navigation in different condition or in Athens, uh, the lo a logistic uh, hub seen as a smart warehouse uh, with the different human AGV uh, collaboration, and of course, for each of these uh, uh, use case, we have to provide, or we are uh, focusing to provide, different KPIs in terms of um, uh, use case, like uh, port safety, for example, re uh, reduced safety during the navigation, and of course, um, uh, for example, increase operational uh, efficiency. So starting from these um, NetApps requirements, uh, in the project, we have defined um, as a vital 5G uh, overall uh, uh, concept. The 5G architecture that somehow is requiring is, is reflecting different uh, functionalities that we are considered to be as main um, uh, functionality. So we have inside in the middle the 5G facilities, the three facilities that have been pre uh, presented that have to, to interact and to show off different capabilities in the uh, network. For example, some to, to, to prepare and present northbound interfaces to, uh, to different, uh, uh, for different usage, to have the NetApps APIs, to have uh, the possibility to, to provide the network service network slicing, to provide orchestration, enhanced slicing management, uh, 5G standalone, uh, release 16 capabilities in terms of radio access network, edge computing, service uh, and service-based implementation. So the novel concept uh, related to cloud uh, native uh, uh, implementation, the adoption of cloud native uh, principles, and of course to, to permit and to provide different test cases, ex execution experiments for the uh, uh, verticals, including the capabilities and the possibility of the third partners, third parties to experiment uh, different application in this uh, in this context. So, starting from uh, this, 
based on the architectural con component and concept of the of the, pro of the project, starting with an um, uh, experiment platform like uh, act like an open uh, environment, continuing with the uh, 5G testbed in three different uh, uh, locations, and of course uh, enabling. Uh, in this uh, facility, transport and logistic facility, enabling the 5G use cases and services uh, in line with the uh, uh, parameters that we have uh, described for the autom automated vessel transport, for example, data enabled assisted uh, navigation or uh, uh, facility warehouse freight uh, uh, logistic uh, enhancement. What we propose. We propose a 5G architecture seen as functional blocks and uh, interfaces, having on top of this um, architecture the vital 5G platform, including different software components that are acting or are playing different role, for example, for the NetApp service online repository, for the transport and logistic lifecycle management, the service monitoring, and of course the service testing through a facility to the vital 5G platform connectivity, of course, a secured connectivity, uh, uh, linking this vital 5G platform with the three uh, testbed um, and putting in, uh, in place different uh, interfaces for example, slides management, monitoring, network service KPI collection, NetApps uh, uh, running configuration or service um, uh, orchestrate. What we are doing, we have three testbed that have different technology or implement the technology in different way, but in the end we are providing from the uh, functional block uh, perspective the the same um, the same characteristic in uh, all three uh, facilities. So one of the main achievements from the facility perspective is to provide the 5G slicing functionality in the standalone uh, environment. As you can see, we can uh, uh, we provide uh, uh, network slices per service uh, slice flow, uh, identified through different uh, um, um, characteristics based on, of course, of the on the standards related to the slice configuration, slice definition, based on service slice template, service descriptor, and um, of course. Um, uh, implementing and configuring all these slice specificities in all the uh, network components from the radio access network part, for the transport part, and for, for the core part. So we are providing this slice implementation, but not only we are providing the, the slice implementation, but in vi a Vital 5G we are also providing the orchestration of the components. So we we have like um, available resource capab capabilities as, a, as an example, in the, in the radio access network, in the core, and of course, in the virtualized infrastructure. And based on this uh, uh, characteristic defining in the 5G uh, platform, we can we know about the capabilities of the and of the availability of the resources that we have, and then of course um, that we can consume for the need, uh, needs of the, the different uh, uh, services. Uh, we are using orchestration based on the in the all the three tests by, based on the open source, source mano that are provide, is providing the automation of the network services, data collection on different uh, capabilities. Uh, the common one should be the uh, Prometheus and uh, and Lafana, and of course to as a dashboard. And of course um, uh, we are capable uh, based on the infrastructure that we have built and we'll see to to provide access of the third parties. To, to access the different testbed and then to uh, experiment their uh, uh, NetApps or their application in the in the testbed, in the 5G open testbed that we have prepared. Another important aspect that we have uh, discussed in, um, uh, we have prepared, it's about the 5G, in this 5G architecture, the monitoring part, um, because we, we consider uh, to monitor to monitor the infrastructure and the service in the 5G standalone uh, environment is a very important topic. So, as each of the testbed is composed by different network equipment from different, I would say, provider, the the project is proposing uh, using different tools of data collection from the from the from the testbed data acquisition to collect in a in a proper way. This data to aggregate the data in the in the testbed, and then, as we will see uh, in this uh, in this context, to expose the data to the upper application layer, 
upper application layer that is in fact hosted in the vital 5G platform like a separated software component where the data are uh, analyzed and of course different uh, actions could be uh, taken. And not in the end, um, as an architecture design, um, we took into consideration uh, two aspects, the 5G network security that is in line with the 3GPP security uh, architecture group, 3GPP SA, uh, 13 and of course our internal vital 5G security uh, design take into account that within this uh, open 5G open testbed deployment we need to take into uh, consideration access and activities for the platform developers access and activities for the NetApps developers that are developing the project NetApps within the uh, testbed that are onboarding are going to onboard these NetApps in the in the infrastructure and of course to to choose the proper testbed in uh, in, in each case and of course to provide this capability access also to the third party uh, developers doing this uh, through a security by design implementation of the of the testbed having in uh, in the central position the vital 5g platform components hosted in uh, orange romania testbed uh, interconnected with uh, the other two uh, testbed in terms of uh, 5g and netapps deployment so uh, this was the first part in order to to introduce the uh, the architecture i'll give the floor to our colleagues uh, colleague one, in order to deep in deep uh, present the related and relevant interfaces uh, defined in the architectural uh, framework. Juan? Yes, you should be able to see my screen now. Can you confirm? Yes. 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 Okay, yes. So the purpose of this talk, as uh, Marius was saying, sorry, one second. I cannot uh, seem to switch. Mm, one second, sorry. So as, well as, as my colleague Marius was saying, the purpose of this uh, uh, short presentation is to go a little bit deeper into the specifics of the interfaces that are offered by the testbed so that we can also explain the kind of services that we uh, consume from the Vital 5G platform in order to provide the value added uh, functionality for the service des uh, design, uh, ex uh, service lifecycle management and experimentation on top of the virtualized infrastructure offered by testbed. As you can see here, you have a similar picture to the one that was pres already presented by, by Marius. On the top, we have the Vital 5G platform and the main functional blocks of the platform. These are the, the functional blocks that allow us to um, facilitate the service design, so the onboarding of the NetApp, of the NetApps, of the different stakeholders, uh, the onboarding of the vertical services that I, I chain these the NetApps together, uh, the module which are, um, allows to facilitate the lifecycle management of the, the services uh, that I, you know, uh, use these NetApps, and uh, the modules that uh, allow to uh, experiment, uh, to perform some experiments and to perform some validation over the, over the running instances. On the bottom, the typical uh, control and management modules that are uh, part of the testbed. So you have the NFEO, the 5G network and monitoring, the 5G network exercise management. This is a typical representation of the of the management plane of the of the virtual infrastructure of the testbed. And the idea that we followed uh, when we designed the architecture is that we defined a set of uh, interfaces which are represented by the points that uh, the black points that you see in the figure. Um, that define uh, the um, specific uh, APIs uh, for uh, that allow us to interact with the testbed. 
the set of these uh, uh, the, the set of these interfaces define a unified interface that the platform uses to uh, consume the services offered by by the testbed. So we have uh, we have we will have services uh, related to the uh, NFBO catalog management for the onboarding of NF packages and network service descriptors. We will have uh, APIs uh, for uh, abstracting the lifecycle management of the network services. We, will, we already have interfaces that allow us to um, manage the 5G uh, slices and uh, either to provision a, a, a slice on the on the testbed given some sort of characteristics or to retrieve the ones that have been uh, uh, already pre-provisioned depending on the test capabilities. And we have also interfaces that allow us to um, uh, configure the monitoring metrics that we require as part of the experiment uh, and uh, to also retrieve monitoring da data coming from the testbed. Uh, of course, uh, this unified uh, uh, interface that we use, it's a, it's a high level uh, interface that then needs to be adapted to the testbed specifics. That's why you see uh, uh, some models in between the testbed specific interfaces and this unified uh, uh, interface. These are the, the specific plugins that we need to develop in order to interact uh, with a, a specific control model of the test, but for instance, to adapt to uh, a different protocol, to a different uh, controller, whatever. So depending on the on the on the test on the test very specific uh, uh, control plane or, or control protocol, uh, we have some specific plugins that allow the the the, um, the platform to interact interact using this uh, unified uh, Southbound interface. Uh, I've been talking about the services that are uh, used, uh, uh, that are, uh, let's say, exposed by the testbed in a generic manner, and uh, these are the three main uh, services that, the, that the, we consume from the testbed from the platform perspective. The first one is uh, because, of course, we need to be able to onboard the BNF package and the BN, uh, network service descriptors, and uh, we need to be able to orchestrate uh, these services, uh, which mostly represent the, the specific the, the service specific part of of the um, of the of the overall transport and logistics service. So we have uh, an uh, the, the test needs to be capable of, of offering lifecycle management and onboarding capabilities. Uh, this is uh, in order to be able to interact with the NFVO that the testbed has and to abstract somehow the interaction with the virtual infrastructure management and the VNF manager for the lifecycle management of the virtual network functions and the network services associated with our vertical services. Then, uh, since the purpose of is uh, of the of the project is to be able to um, somehow use this NetApp in 5G enabled uh, in 5G enabled uh, testbeds, uh, we need to be able to um, manage the uh, 5G slices that are either pre-provisioned on the testbed or to or be able to uh, instantiate. Uh, some 5G slices given the requirements that the different NetApps and the different vertical services have. So depending on the test capabilities, we already have um, services exposed by the by the testbed to be able to do these kind of things. And then, as I was saying, since the purpose of, uh, of the project is also to be able to experiment and confirm that um, a service can meet, can, uh, meet certain KPIs given some uh, uh, conditions and given some set, sort of uh, uh, experiments, we need to be able to uh, automatically retrieve monitoring, automatically configure the monitoring metrics that we need to collect from the testbed and, we, and the and the monitoring, uh, and we need to be capable of retrieving the monitoring data produced during the experimentation phase. So basically, we need to be able to extract uh, uh, 5G related KPIs. Uh, we need to be able to extract uh, the, uh, some computing related uh, uh, metrics such as the CPU consumption, the storage consumption, the RAM consumption of our of our NetApps. We also may want to extract some service specific uh, data data that is produced by the NetApps. So uh, the testbed needs to provide this kind of functionality to configure. Uh, this kind of metrics and to be able to retrieve it. 
this is an over, um, a lower level overview of the, the uh, specific APIs that are offered for this kind of services. So I'm not going to go into the details, but for the catalog management of the, the of the NFVO, we need to be able to onboard and uh, and retrieve the, net, the network packages and the VNF packages. And we already have uh, some drivers, as we will see also in the in demonstration at the end, that are capable in, of interacting with OSM for the onboarding of the orchestration related descriptors of our NetApps. Then uh, we have a multi-site uh, slice inventory that interacts with the uh, uh, 5G uh, management uh, controller, let's say, abstracting, which abstracts at the end the interaction with the run controller and the transfer controller and provides uh, information about the slices that are available on the testbed. And uh, if needed, if depending on, and again, depending on the tested capabilities, we may, may be able also to provision a uh, a uh, slice given the specific slice profile determined by the NetApps. And then we have already established an initial uh, uh, monitoring API to be able to uh, retrieve uh, data from the test beds and uh, also to start uh, to determine which are the metrics that need to be collected. This is an example, uh, for instance, of the kind of uh, um, uh, messages that are exchanged between the, the, the Vital 5G platform for the retrieval of the of the monitoring data. Not going to go to the details, but the, the, every time we, we retrieve some uh, a metrics pushed into the bus of the monitoring platform, it provides a thumb sign, uh, an identifier of the of the met particular metric that we are referring to, the unit, uh, the value, of course. And it has some certain topic that allow us to identify to which uh, kind of which specific service this metrics belongs to, so that it can be then processed by the platform to produce automated results. And just as a summary, these are the in the standards that we are using as a reference to the, for the development of the of this uh, unified uh, South South One interface that we use for interacting with the test. But we have on the one hand the NFV related the, the uh, standards for the lifecycle management and the definition of the of the descriptors, which of course we take mostly from Etsy and the stand and the open source mano. Uh, and then uh, we are using some uh, uh, 3PVP oriented uh, or based uh, standards to develop the, 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 the interface that we use to retrieve and manage the, the network, the 5G network slices from the test beds. And that's all from my side. So I don't know if you have any questions, otherwise I will give the control for the to the next presenter. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Juan, Juan and Marius. Uh, yeah, if there are any questions, uh, we have a dedicated questions, but if there's something short, we can address it now. Uh, alternatively, please feel free to write in the chat some questions that we can address at the end of the presentations. And with that said, um, yeah, let me pass the, the floor to the three facilities overview uh, speakers, uh, starting with the Athens facilities by Mr. Costa Trijas. Costa, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Thanks so much, everybody. Um, so hopefully you can see me, you can uh, hear me, and you can see my slides in full screen. Check to both, Costa. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so, um, thanks everybody for being here. I'll, I'll try to keep this very brief as the interesting part actually comes after these presentations and regarding the demo. I'll just gonna try to give you the very quick overview of what it is that we're trying to set up in, uh, in Athens within the context of Vital 5G. And of course, this presentation represents the work of the Greek partners, Wings, OT, and, and the Akinesis. So, um, to dive into it, we're practically trying to implement um, a 5G enabled smart and efficient uh, warehouse uh, through the use of uh, autonomous guided vehicles or AGVs as we call them. Um, and to do that, we will create NetApps and the control platforms that we have and through the Vital 5G platform will allow for uh, remote experimentation uh, anywhere. Um, we're, we'll do that by focusing on instantiating three primary services. This is the autonomous pallet transfer, where the AGV will pick up uh, a pallet and move it autonomously to the designated location within the warehouse, thus freeing valuable uh, labor time. 
the second service is the human machine collaboration or the follow me function as we call it um, which during which the AGV autonomously follows employees allowing them to process the orders and do the picking and placing the products on top of the AGV that's uh, uh, autonomously following them instead of wasting time to have to push the cart uh, or push the pallet carrier um, uh, every now and then. And finally, we will instantiate an AGV remote control uh, function within the warehouse. So uh, warehouse employees or managers can access and remotely control the AGV from anywhere in the world. In order to do that, we're creating three different netups. Uh, one is uh, what we call a vertical agnostic netup. It's, uh, uh, and its main functionality is to, to do the data ingestion and fusion from the various sensors that we have on board the AGV and surrounding mounted uh, in various areas of the warehouse. Um, and then we have two vertical specific ones which instantiate specific functions for this use case, which is the indoor robot navigation and coordination with task planning, which is basically responsible for all the autonomous uh, capabilities of the AGV. And the second one is the human and robot collaboration in order to be able for the robot to be able to work with the employees of the warehouse. Um, on top of that, we're also implementing a few auxiliary functions such as the, that we're implementing a digital twin of the warehouse so can always uh, be able to monitor and control where the AGV is and have a real time view of what's happening in the warehouse. We are doing simulations to simulate the best routes for uh, picking or ordering or storing. And in general, you can see on the bottom right of the slide, the sort of principles we're trying to implement and follow, uh, lean warehousing, advanced operations, uh, picking route optimization. This is all part of this big, uh, let's say, warehouse smartification uh, use case. Um, as I mentioned, we have three services and three netups, but um, from previous talks we've had, um, I hope most of you were there, uh, we treat NetApps as components which can be chained to each other to um, create a certain service and function. And this is the case here. So there's no one-to-one -one, uh, matching between the NetApps and services. As you can see from this graph, um, it actually takes always a combination of different NetApps to instantiate each of the services we're building. So we are really ongoing with the implementation of these um, services in the NetApp. So the vertical agnostic NetApp um, is actually uh, ready and we're moving on with the two specific ones. And the blueprints for all the NetApps are available and the test cases that we need to run are now ready and we're really entering the final stages of implementation. Um, but a few words on uh, where we're trying to set all of this up. Um, which is practically a bit of information about the 5G testbed that we're building in Athens to support this AGV operation within the warehouse. So uh, the, the Aegeneses warehouse where our trials will take place is located in the suburbs of Athens, uh, which is about 23 kilometers away from the main facilities of um, OTE where the core of the network is housed. So. Um, we're talking, of course, about a um, 3GPP release 16 standalone network that we're setting up, uh, which was part of the requirements for this project. Uh, so we'll be installing the radio access part at the Diakinesis warehouse where the antennas will be placed and we'll have the core of the network uh, at the facilities of uh, OTE. The distance is so small that uh, we don't need an addition, we don't need an additional MEC uh, site uh, as the latency was already measured between the core site and the, um, the Guinness's warehouse, and it's extremely low already, uh, thanks to 5G. Uh, we'll use, of course, indoor cells to provide coverage within the warehouse. Um, we're going to use two of them uh, provided by Ericsson. Those are already mounted in the warehouse. You can see on the bottom right graphic uh, that we have two small cells covering um, different uh, spaces within the warehouse. And we're going to use the um, Athon and Griffon uh, version 2 uh, for the core uh, part of the network. Uh, there is a um, fiber interconnection between the core and the RAM, which is already there. And we're actually now progressing with the integration of all these parts. The core parts will also be ready by the end of the month. And of course, on top of that, we're going to be running the OSM to be able to provide uh, orchestration for the deployed services on top of this network. Um, this is the idea on how to provide the necessary 5G coverage within the warehouse. 
that is needed for our use cases. Now, regarding the warehouse itself, uh, it's a state-of-the-art facility. The Akinis is actually the largest third-party logistics operator in, in Greece. So we're very thankful that they are providing us with access into this real-life facility where daily they have uh, enormous operations to uh, go through their processes. Um, it's an enormous facility of which we're going to use a smaller part. As, of course, you can understand, we're going to cover an area of 1,200 square meters for the purposes of our demos. You can see on the right-hand side figure. And there are different interest points within the area. It's the area where we have the inbound and outbound docks where uh, the pallets and cargo are arriving or being dispatched. And we have separate uh, storage areas, uh, picking areas and checking areas within the warehouse. As part of the different tests that we'll run, we'll cover all of these and we'll cover different scenarios regarding the, the movement of the robot, trying to maybe even find black spots within the area, how, how would that affect the performance and how we can gain uh, in all of that based on the NetApps that we're creating. Um, now regarding the implementation phase, uh, you can see on the top uh, right-hand side the HGV we're using, which is being retrofitted as we speak with a special uh, casing that will allow it to transfer pallets uh, it's completely autonomous. Uh, we've upgraded it to be 5G enabled and it has lifting capability of uh, up to 150 kilos, which is more than enough for our use cases as we're talking about a pharmaceutical uh, warehouse uh, where usually most of the medicine is quite light, lightweight. Um, uh, next to it, you can also see the digital twin implementation that uh, we've set forth of the actual uh, warehouse, which will have live information from where the robot and the various employees are. So we can also facilitate remote monitoring and remote control of the entire process. Uh, on the bottom right hand side of the slide, you can actually see a first instantiation of the user interface. Uh, we'll have to uh, be able to select any of the available AGVs in the warehouse to configure it, provide the settings we want, or assign a task for it that it will then autonomously execute uh, in collaboration potentially with one of the uh, warehouse employees. So this takes a lot of work. Um, we're actually pretty much ready. We've done already. Uh, a few initial tests at the, the Aginesis warehouse, and next week we're going there again for a second round um, as we merge everything together to be able to start running the, the experiments. Um, so what are the next step for us? As I mentioned, we're trying to wrap up the core installation and of course the integration of the uh, testbed with the, and the end-to-end -end facility with the Vital 5G platform is coming uh, up next. Um, and we want to continue to do testing also in July and September. Um, by Q3, of course, 2022, we want to have everything ready because we need to start also the official trials uh, as per the project plan uh, by November. We'll, we'll have everything integrated and we'll, we'll be able to access the um, facility through the Vital 5G platform, onboard our NetApps, deploy our services, and control the entire process via the Vital 5G platform. Um, this is where we stand. I'm happy to take any questions. I don't want to take more of your time. Just a small note here that um, a lot of these things um, come November will also uh, be available to third party experimenters. So this is uh, an invitation from our side to uh, come and meet us, send us emails, get to know each other. Um, so we can tell you exactly of the offering that you have. So some of our NetApps uh, data from the warehouse or some of the functionalities that we have developed will be available for third-party experimenters to either experience for themselves what we're doing here or to even develop their own NetApps, chain it with the ones that are already existing, uh, use the tools of the platform of Vital 5G so they can also uh, experience firsthand um, what 5G can do for transport and logistics. And with that, I'm going to stop. Um, thanks a lot, everyone, and I'm looking forward to answering your questions. Thank you very much, Costa. Uh, please, yes, if anyone has questions, please uh, pose them. And if not, I will give this the floor to Mr. Jean Julien from uh, the from Antwerp, where he will present the facility there. Uh, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, thank you. Does everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay, we can see your screen and we can hear you. Mm -hmm. Let me go into presentation mode. Perfect. Does it work? Okay. Yes. Good. It works. 
Yeah, so uh, thanks everyone. Um, I'm here to give an introduction to the Antwerp's uh, test bed. Uh, so as we said, it's, uh, in, it's basically based in port of Antwerp and our partners are IMAC, Telenet, CIFAR and DigiTrans. Um, so first, a very quick introduction about Telenet itself, if it's uh, not familiar with it. Um, so we are a typical NSP in Belgium. We offer mobile, broadband, TV, telephony, everything. Um, including about 700,000 fixed mobile converse users. Um, total number of employees about 3,300 and also th about 3,300 number of towers for the mobile network. Uh, a good revenue every quarter. And uh, for the mobile part, we do have a good tradition of being kind of, we want to be the best in Belgium for the mobile part. And we did achieve it somehow with the uh, 4G network. So this is the latest test with uh, with BIPT, which is uh, the Belgium Authority. So we achieved the average download speed of 93.5 megabits per second on LTE network. That's uh, the national average. And of course, we want to keep uh, our uh, advantage in, in mobile with 5G. But we know that with 5G, it's not just about speed anymore. anymore. Uh, the speed is far enough than, than a normal customer needs. So that's why we are here uh, in this project. So our objectives in the project, uh, let's say there are, there are two sides. One is more traditional side. That's the part we how we build the test bed to understand the problem uh, in, in the area. So delays, uh, lack of resources, both in, in human resources and also uh, yeah uh, time resources. And also there's a very high traffic density in Port of Antwerp. And then of course the solution is that we want to connect as much as possible everything uh, with 5G and start generating data. And once we have that, we can use applications to see, uh, foresee problems and, and fix problems. Um, yeah, we can use this opportunity to learn the business requirements, which translate to our network requirements. And then we build a facility uh, with technologies, uh, infrastructures, you know, 5G devices, everything to fix uh, the, the problem. So that's on the test by side, it's more, more traditional what we do as, a, as an NNO. Uh, and the second part is uh, the NetApp platform, or the Vital 5G platform. So this is already discussed uh, by Juan and uh, Marus. So there are, there are a number of interfaces between the 5G network and the open platform. Um, so generating a, uh, using APIs to generate data and do analytics of network data is not something new. But uh, normally, in, in traditional way, it is managed by MNO ourselves. So we do our own analytics, but what we offer to the customer is uh, a best effort. So first come, first serve. There's uh, the feedback from customer is, is uh, quite a manual process. So with this, with 5G, uh, in including um, the SLA in the services, it is quite necessary to have uh, uh, the interfaces set up so that we can have a real-time analytics on the network and also the question is that once we increase the transparency of our network uh, to the platform, uh, what does this mean to us? Do we lose some freedom or it does, does it help us to onboard uh, new customers in a better efficient way? I, I think the answer is yes. So I think, uh, so as you can see from the NetApp side, there are, there are several functions. I have a direct link to the, to the 5G network. So including network slicing inventory management and monitoring platform, which is really collecting the network KPIs in um, a relatively real-time way. And then also on the service orchestration part, that is really a key uh, for the 5G uh, standalone network on the slicing part that we want to configure the network as we, as we would like to have, uh, especially when we onboard new applications. Um, and of course, this is still within one vertical. Huh? With, so imagine if we do this for multiple verticals and so many potential partners, so all this system will be very important and, and actually a must. Otherwise, we will never have the resource to uh, one by one. So yeah, for this presentation, I will still focus a bit on, on the left side, the traditional part, to see what we have built uh, in the area. So let's see what we need in Port of Antwerp. Uh, this is the breakdown of the use cases we have. So first, we have two services, uh, the vessel automated uh, navigation and the uh, vessel remote monitoring. Uh, and for those two services, there are uh, five net apps, uh, a digital twin, remote monitoring, uh, autonomous uh, vessel assistant. It's not a uh, navigation control anymore, so we don't do control directly. It's uh, now assistance. 
and then uh, navigation speed optimizer and on board data collection and the interfaces. So all of those NetApps are hosted on the NetApp platform and some are already there running on public cloud. Um, but we, between them, there are the, you can see the lines, that's how each of the functions are, are connected to each other. And also the data collection, um, of course, all the data come from the vessels and sensors going through the network uh, of a 5G network and then feed it to different NetApps. So that's uh, the whole uh, that's the whole part, uh, the whole testbed infrastructure. So w with the platform, with 5G, and with vessels. And with the net, on the NetApp platform part, it's, we're more relying on our partner, uh, iMac, with this. So at Talent, we, we really focus on the 5G and 5G devices. And then with DigiTrans and CFAR, they are more on the data sources and, of, of course, the, the NetApp, building the NetApp itself. So let's see what 5G we have here. Uh, so first thing to understand, the port of Antwerp is quite a large area. Uh, we are looking at this picture here. It's a, it's a quite large area. So in this area, we have 20 sites now, including new builds. We, I cannot indicate all of them, of course. It's kind of confidential. But uh, the typical average distance for the 20 sites is in the north part is about 2 kilometers, uh, the inter-site distance, and in the south is about 1.5 kilometers. So yeah, you can feel this is a, a large area. And uh, you can see in this picture, we, I have a, a typical simulation of uh, a 3.5 N7, 5G N78 coverage with one uh, radio site. And, and it's covering uh, a small industrial zones and it's neighboring waterways. So, so with, uh, with, 5G, with 5G Vettel here, we are, uh, already have four 5G sites, so including two upgrades, so one in the north, one in the south, and two new builds. Um, so with this, we already connected to uh, a 5G standalone core, which is a dedicated testbed core um, in Arslan, which is about uh, 18 kilometers away from uh, Port of Antwerp. So uh, what, the way we do it here is, is, is a little bit special and different from other testbed is that we do share a part of the infrastructure with the production network because this port of Antwerp is a busy area that we cannot really say we block the spectrum, block all the infrastructure for the, for the project and do not allow it for commercial use. The commercial uh, deployment is ongoing in Belgium, so it's, it's impossible to, to block it completely for the research. So we have to share the infrastructure. Um, but I think the, the good side is because we are sharing the infrastructure, we also get firsthand the realistic network conditions, network traffic, and we, when using the performance analytics, we also have a, a really realistic results. So once we, once we, we have all the results um, and, and all the trials, we are very close to, to use this, mess, uh, this network commercially uh, in the future. So I think that's uh, one of the advantages of sharing the infrastructure. But anyhow, as we mentioned, the, run, uh, the radio network is shared, the spectrum is shared, uh, but the core is a dedicated one located in our data center. Uh, let's take a look at the ship. So this is the ship that is uh, traveling in Port of Antwerp. Between Port of Antwerp to south of Belgium, it's a uh, over 100 meter long vessel. It's commercially uh, used. Uh, so it's now traveling on this canal, uh, following this canal towards south, uh, east, and then going to the direction of Liège. But this uh, this ship is uh, it does not have a fixed route, so it can change. So on paper, it can travel between all the nodes in Port of Antwerp. That's also why we are looking uh, not just on one fixed uh, route for the coverage. We're we're deploying almost everywhere in Port of Antwerp. Um, yeah, the last part is uh, about 5G radio. So uh, there are two parts of uh, uh, yeah two spectrum that we are using. One is the uh, N1, which is 2100 megahertz where we deploy the 5G DSS, spectrum sharing with the LTE. And the second part is uh, the N78, the C-band. Over there, that, there, that's where we use a typical massive MIMO at the 30, uh, 32 streams or uh, 64 streams. And, and as, as we said before, it is shared between production and the testing. So on the production part, of course, it's used for non-standalone, but for us, it's standalone. And uh, for the end-to-end -end slicing, it's configured directly towards our test core here. So our test core manages its own network slice using its own SIM cores, uh, but share the infrastructure on the radio part with production. Yeah. So our challenges uh, and plans for the next. 
So as we mentioned before, um, we are using the N78 and N1 here. So we have 100 megahertz on N78 and 15 with DSS on N1. That's already available. But you can see that uh, the two low bands are, are not, well, actually it's just the, the auction on 7 megahertz was just finished uh, earlier this week. So we just got it. But on the 15, uh, 1400 megahertz, the spectrum is not decided. So um, uh, what it means that um, now we already provide uh, um, providing uh, two end-to-end -end network slices. One of them is for the IoT one. Another one is for the typical EMBB, which uh, a lot of the uh, camera traffic will be located on. Uh, but the thing is that we we just got 700 megahertz, and we don't have the 14 megahertz yet. So that uh, also means we don't have URLC in services. Uh, that's one of our uh, next steps. Of course, we need to get the equipment ready, and for this, we need to get the spectrum ready so that we can have more uh, spectrum and then, of course, wait for the URC device to be in place so that we can really deploy uh, more network slices in the test bed. So plan for the next. Uh, yeah, we are connecting Port of Antwerp with 5G radio, 5G core, and then, yeah, one more thing to mention towards uh, our partner, IMEC, uh, on the NetHack platform side, we even though yeah, as we said, it's quite close. They are, they are, their data center is also in Antwerp, so on paper we can just connect everything through public internet. But we still decided to put kind of set it up uh, as kind of edge uh, solution. So everything, so from the our data center where the 5G core is to their NetApp server, um, we will bring a direct line, so that we we can take it as kind of a 5G edge solution. Uh, even though I think the, the difference it makes is really minimal in terms of latency, uh, but we still decided to do it. So in the in the coming uh, months, well, uh, which is one part of the uh, dry runs is already happening in Port of Antwerp with uh, the vessel from CIFAR. Uh, but in the coming months, we will do a lot more testing uh, end to end uh, with NetApps and that's what we call the full trials. And of course, we will do a lot of measurements on the network performances. Uh, and then also, as we mentioned, we discussed, we need to integrate more interfaces with the platform. Uh, yeah, and then to further improve the test bed, we will deploy more uh, cell towers and more spectrum on, on the test bed. That's from Antwerp. Did I finish before the time? Yes, perfect. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, please put them in the chat or you can speak now. And if not, then I will pass the floor again to Marius uh, to describe the Romanian trial site. So, uh, Marius, the floor is yes. yours. Yes, can you hear me? So I hope the display is better now. Uh, well, yes. again, it's on present presenter mode. If you can just swap it. It's okay. Yep, yep, now it's Great. perfect. Thanks a lot. So, um, as the, the other uh, facilities have, have been presented, right now we will present Romanian one. Uh, we all in Romania together with our uh, colleagues involved in the in the project, the, the BEA uh, uh, company. So, uh, in, uh, in Romania, in this uh, NetApps 5G environment, what we, what we are targeting, we are targeting the 5G connectivity that in data enabled assisted navigation using uh, sensing and video camera, uh, highlighting different uh, services like data enabled assisted navigation, accurate electronic navigation map creation, or and predictive maintenance and checks of the sensor uh, within the with the ship. Of course, with different uh, uh, netups that are doing uh, roles like uh, data stream organization, board data collection, interfacing from uh, the vessels. Um, distributed sensor in data uh, ingestion, remote inspection, and of course on board data collection and uh, interfacing with the uh, owner of the uh, of the vessel. Uh, as you can see in the right side of the slides, toward edge nodes and to to the other um, uh, netups, accessing the 5G network to the 5G core network, and of course then to the area where hosting the virtualized, virtualized infrastructure, where in fact we are doing the um, deployment and the integration of the netups. With, uh, with the entire end-to-end -end 5G standalone scenario, doing, in fact, the collection of the, of the data, focusing on this uh, data-enabled assistive navigation uh, with the sensor inputted on the, um, on the vessel. So um, 
like uh, some updates of what we have right now in the infra infra infrastructure, like uh, 5G testbed, uh, related to the transport and logistic facility, and of course the net apps and software uh, tools and solution. In the testbed, um, we have the 5G standalone uh, radio access network and um, uh, radio core network. They are uh, in place. We have already configured two network slices, one for the mobile EMBB slice and the other for the, the, the low latency. Uh, due to the fact that we are hosting the already presented Vital 5G platform, we have connectivity between our uh, site and the other slice. Those two manual slices are already defined and implemented, have tested and uh, validated. And we have uh, went far, further also to, to see what kind of devices we are, we are able to use in this uh, standalone um, uh, environment and how we can automate the, the process of the end-to-end -end service slice uh, creation in the 5G network. Uh, with the support of the monitoring solution using the framework uh, uh, presented in the in the first uh, uh, presentation so the transport and logistic vertical facilities we have uh, this um, 5g uh, implementation in uh, in uh, and, it, and it, it's uh, uh, functional uh, from the facility perspective we have identified all the requirements preparation equipment and installation in the vessel area in order to to be able to to cope with all this uh, data acquisition sensoring data uh, acquisition and of course introducing different peripheral components related to uh, the processing uh, uh, unit and what we have to 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 do as an ongoing work from our colleagues from uh, uh, bea to implement this uh, uh, netaps in the orange testbed uh, cloud to match also continue to match the basic ideas with the networking uh, idea and in the end to to create the end-to-end -end scenario of the netup uh, integration implementation and deployment in the infrastructure by using the netup blue validator tools uh, intent based mechanism and of course uh, the netups that have been uh, uh, presented in initial phase uh, va2 and vs9 initial version that um, are um, are ongoing um, so for the Romania facility, the G node B, the standalone G node B, is already in place in uh, in the port, as you can see in the in the uh, in the picture. Uh, this is the estimated area of the 5G uh, standalone uh, implementation. We are using N78 100 mega megahertz uh, uh, spectrum. We have started from the uh, 5G NSA implementation, but then we moved to the 5G standalone. A standalone core uh, PMR uh, implementation. Uh, so we are able to offer the uh, to the developers, to the customer, the feature of the stand, the standard slides, uh, slice as uh, EMBB and uh, uh, low latency. Uh, different uh, data networks have been uh, uh, configured, differentiated through the QS flow support by 5G Q, Q, QI. Um, that are mapped in the radio part and in the um, in the 5G core network part with support of the of the transport part and uh, the other remaining uh, 5G standalone uh, service-based architecture for AMF, session managed function, UPF authentication, user data management, and the repository repository function are deployed in the cloud native environment. For, so, for this perspective, in uh, Orange Romania testbed the network slices have been tested and uh, validated but not only in uh, Galat we have started with the deployment in our one of the, our, our facilities in the in the laboratory starting with uh, services uh, in different um, format like SA and uh, NSA testing and validating different devices boards to see how they can work on uh, on this what we have done in the laboratory we are doing also in the in the in the port uh, we have an advanced and complex network infrastructure uh, from the um, computing part virtualization based on the OpenStack um, uh, dockerized environment orchestrated through uh, Kubernetes or bare metal, an advanced IP network architecture like that is in fact uh, an IP fabric concept that give us the possibility to also or orchestrate the, the network, the IP, uh, the IP network. And uh, within this design uh, testing environment and validation environment for the NSA SA implementation, focusing on the standalone implementation, um, with the features and the capabilities that right now, as we are speaking, deploys as network services are available in uh, in Galaxy port. So um, one of the main uh, 
important uh, topics in uh, in this is not only related to the uh, network slicing, slicing implementation services, uh, network servicing orchestration, uh, onboarding deployment, but also it's um, related to the transport network orchestration. As uh, through the implementation that we have in the in the network, we are able to orchestrate the end-to-end -end network uh, transport. Uh, from the uh, do not be access um, uh, in the in the network to the uh, VMs or the compute uh, infrastructure uh, retrieving the data center deployed in, uh, in in data center. So all these configurations through the complexity um, is done uh, automatically using different uh, uh, tools. For example, st standard based um, uh, young models. Uh, that can that help us in an end-to-end -end environment to to orchestrate the the infrastructure. And this um, in this uh, in this context, uh, everything is ready and func functional. We are able to to do this orchestration uh, too. So these are these are the highlights for the Romania facility, together with um, Orange Romania and of course with their partners working on this um, these aspects. Perfect. Thank you very much, Marius. Uh, anyone, uh, if anyone has questions here or in the chat, please feel free. Um, and if not, uh, we move to the last part of our presentation, the demo. Um, so um, I will share it. So it will be presented by Juan and Catalin. Um, let me just share it. Um, let me share my screen with you. Uh, here it is. Share. I think I'm already sharing, so if you can give me the control, I think it will be better so I can save some time because we are already ah, in delay. Perfect. Yes, of course. Please, please do. Please do. Um, yes, you have the control now to share. Can you see my, my screen, right? Yes, of course. Okay, let me put it full screen. So as uh, uh, Andreas was saying, uh, this is demo is uh, represented by me and and. Uh, I will be talking about the uh, meta package onboarding and vertical service reprint onboarding. Uh, and then we will show how um, we can um, manage uh, the, the life cycle managers and life cycle management of our fast service. And uh, for this, we I will pass the, the, the token to uh, my colleague Catherine. So to Catherine, so that he can explain also what is happening at the, at the testbed level. As you can see here, this is the, the landing page of the portal web GUI that we ha have been developing in, in, in Vital 5G. This is a, of, of a contribution of EVOS. Um, and uh, this is the, uh, mainly the, the page that allows you to allows the, the end user to start designing the, the services and to trigger the, uh, the instantiation of, of the vertical service and to manage the experiments that they want to run on top of the instances. If I go a little bit better, a little bit more. This is the part that allows uh, facilitates the overall service design. As you can see, there are different uh, buttons to um, see which are the available NetApps, the available vertical service blueprint, the test cases that are at the end, the scripts that we will run when we execute some experiment, experiment blueprints that allows to describe the experiments that they are going to run. So they link the vertical services with the test cases and the KPIs that we want to collect. There are pages also to onboard uh, virtual, net, uh, virtual network functions and to onboard network services on the on the different test beds. Uh, right now, the DFS is to show you which uh, uh, what the end user can see when when uh, onboarding a NetApp. So basically, this shows the catalog of NetApps that are already available in the in the in the NetApp catalog. Uh, in this case, there are two uh, different NetApps, and uh, the idea is to first show you the kind of information that uh, each NetApp can contain. Okay. As you can see, this is the information that is stored in what we call the NetApp Blueprint. Basically, it provides some uh, more high-level information that uh, facilitates, the, on the one side, the composition of these NetApps into more complex services, describing the kind of interfaces that uh, this uh, NetApp has. 
So if I scroll down a little bit there, you can see that the, the Neta Blueprint contains the, Neta, the, the interface specification. So it basically links to either documentation or open API files that a NetApp developer, can, a vertical service developer can use in order to consume this NetApp or use it as a part of the service. And uh, most importantly, it also describes uh, the uh, 5G uh, capabilities of the 5G service profile that is needed to attach this NetApp to the 5G to the 5G network. As you can see here, uh, this is modeled in the NetApp blueprint by the 5G endpoints. In this case, we specify that this uh, uh, NetApp should be attached to our ultra low, ultra low latency uh, slice, and we uh, specify an availability of 99% with a latency of 60 milliseconds, just, just for illustration purposes. Also, as you can see here, there are some more information that allow us, allow us to better compose this as in other services. So, for instance, we specify this is a vertical, uh, that this is a vertical agnostic NetApp, meaning that it can be used in a wide spectrum of, of, uh, of scenarios uh, to collect uh, data coming from IoT, from IoT devices. So, this is the case of, of, of a NetApp that collects uh, uh, alerts or that produces alerts and, and uh, Process events based on the information collected from the IoT sensors. We also specify here, as you can see, placement that is going to place in the core segment of the network. And we specify also which are the functional blocks uh, that compose so that any developer can understand more or less how this setup is built on the functional blocks. And as I was saying, uh, we also specify uh, the application metrics that this, this setup produced. Uh, which can be used then in order to um, the, the, uh, specify which are the KPIs that we want to collect and also which are the infrastructure metrics that we may want to collect uh, or that are of interest for the that are of interest for this NetApp in order to understand uh, uh, to evaluate the overall performance. Okay, uh, let me go just a little bit forward, skipping the part because we have. Uh, some messages explain uh, in detail which are each of the parameters but in the, in the interest of time I'm going to skip it. Then uh, this is the part of the onboarding of an, an etap. As you can see in the screen basically uh, it allows you to su submit the VNF, the, the first of all the, the, the VNF the NetApp package containing the, the NetApp package, sorry, containing the blueprint that uh, had the information I was mentioning before, and then to onboard the VNF uh, uh, VNS descriptor in this case associated with this uh, with this NetApp. So you can see one uh, the the one that I had onboarded is already available on the catalog, so it can be used then to uh, compose vertical services. Then we have the part of the vertical service blueprints in the same. Uh, Following the same as, uh, as, uh, uh, logic, we first uh, this is, shows that we have already some vertical services onboarded on the on the, our catalogs that can be used, uh, given that the uh, the user has a proper access control because it's something that we also enforce. We have access controls for the different NetApps and vertical services depending on the credentials provided by the user. And we can see which are the details uh, of the different NetApps. In, in this case, this is a very simple NetApp and a very simple vertical service which only contains the NetApp that I was showing before. So it doesn't contain any more information and it determines that it's going to be on the, deployed in, in the Athens Cesped and collect some application metric. And we can also onboard a new, uh, a new vertical service following the same procedure. On, on board the blueprint, we onboard the, NS, the orchestration descriptor, which in this case is the NSD, and we create some sort of uh, policies that determine based on the service level parameters, which is the specific deployment framework instantiation level that we are going to request whenever this uh, vertical service is instantiated. Then, we can create customizations of this uh, of, of the services that we want to instantiate. This is done through vertical service descriptor. Basically, we select which is the, net, the vertical service blueprint that we want to use, and we specify a value for uh, the, the input parameters that were specified for this service. In this case, the number of IoT sensors. And this is all we needed in, in terms of service design. So we are ready at this moment to 
trigger uh, distanciation because we have already onboarded the NetApp. We have VNF packages, the vertical service using this NetApp and the associated network service descriptor, and we created a specific customization to, um, to trigger the instantiation. So I'm going to pass the token to uh, Catherine you. for the. Uh, yes. Thank you, Juan. Hello, everyone. In the following moment, I will present uh, the vertical service instantiation at uh, our test uh, uh, testbed level, and in our infra infrastructure, we will use as an orchestrator the way open source mono version 10, and uh, is uh, on the specific project is configured with the virtual infrastructure manager that we are using that's in OpenStack with the allocated resources for, for the for the VNF instantiated. As a OpenStack version, we use uh, Uzuri. Uh, and right now we will show that uh, in a, a Vital project, uh, we don't have any instances, uh, VNF instances or uh, um, NS instances available. And uh, we uh, built the packages uh, for for this for this deployment. And right now, uh, we will start the instantiation uh, using uh, an API call uh, to to the OSM to provision the the service um, uh, using using uh, using Postman tool uh, for the. Uh, following version uh, GUI will be finalized and all the, the steps will be made from the graphical interface. Uh, we received uh, as an, uh, a reply from the call an ID, an ID of the instance that we that we deployed. Um, and uh, we're going to check the logs that uh, we can see here from the orchestrator with every uh, orchestrator, orchestrator with every step. Uh, that is uh, parameters, uh, uh, parameters and created uh, for for this uh, for this uh, service. Um, in the OpenStack and um, Open Source Mono, we will start to see the instances that uh, is now deploying. We see here that we ha have stage two uh, deployment and uh, execution the parameters of the of the uh, vertical service instantiation and uh, a new. Virtual machine appears here, <clears throat> configuring with the IP address uh, specific for the uh, uh, connection uh, detailed in the in the descriptor. Um, right now, the the service instantiation is done. Uh, we have uh, an instance ready from operational state. Uh, state. Uh, VM uh, is running and is uh, from a connectivity point of view is uh, configured and uh, all the parameters has been uh, and has been set. Uh, right now, the, pro the all, all the procedure is completed. Um, we can see back from the from the logs uh, all the steps that have been have been done and uh, pro procedure completed with the service instance up and running. Right now, we just gonna check with another API call um, the status of the of the vertical service. We can see that it is instantiated. Um, and as um, I said before, uh, as said before, the all the steps uh, will be done from the web interface in the following uh, demos. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you to both uh, Juan and Catherine for uh, uh, the presentation of the demo and the very useful information. Uh, at this point, uh, we're open to the Q&A session. We're at the end of our webinar. First of all, a big thank you from me to all of the speakers uh, for their time and the preparation. Um, and the floor is open for questions, either by um, unmuting yourselves or through the chat. Um, yeah. Um, if there are no questions, uh, I see nothing in the chat and yeah, I would, I would like to say that uh, this webinar will be uploaded on the Vital 5G YouTube channel. Uh, there will be relevant posts in the social media, so anyone who wants to watch a replay is more than uh, free to and, and share it. Thank you very much to everyone, again, to all the speakers, a round of applause and um, we look forward to the next webinar and just before we close, 
uh, there is there will be another workshop uh, planned in July. More details on that. Uh, it will be for third party experimenters for the facilities and we will uh, give more information as time um, goes by. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Also. Have a nice Thank day. You. Have a nice afternoon. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone.